Hey, this is Book 2, Chapter 5, Part 1. Maze was from the valley, a crease in the currency folded over and swallowed up in a media blitz billfold. L.A. was known to be merciless, take an ego and do a number on it, humble a spotlight seeker by a few hundred thousand tables to wait and nothing to show for it. Now, I cannot tell you much about it, because all I heard was not so enticing, I mean... I've traveled Interstate 5 over the grapevine and through L.A., but only in my mind. Mays, he particularly enjoyed the flats of the valley, which were optimal for skaters. He had no opinion on Hollywood. Anyone who went to L.A. to be an actor, well, you could expect them to badmouth it, couldn't you? Hollywood probably ate them up and spit them out. Either way, there was a lot more to L.A. than Hollywood. Mays had the bloodline, Deluxe, on his mother's side, and in her the gene was recessive, meaning she was just a carrier. Mays's father was oh so human, an alcoholic. These were his real parents, though, which made me wonder about my own, and what really happened with me, because even things you thought were settled may turn out to be unsettling. Humans like to try and settle things to protect you, they say. Could I trust my step-parents for forthright when they told me my mom gave me up? Now who would go and do a thing like that? My real father died? Where is his grave? What if he was still out there? You know how humans love to rewrite history. Maze was lucky he knew all about his parents. His dad was an asshole, sure, but at least he knew the asshole. They raised him in Mexico. Mexico City was apparently flush with deluxe, what with the narco-trafficking culture that had taken root there. After Colombia became an international target of America's war on drugs, the emphasis of the business of distributing Colombia's cash crop shifted to Central America and the Mexican cartels. All the business of money and murder and mayhem meant a plenitude of our cash crop, fear. Law enforcement was corruptible. Politicians were bought or killed if they couldn't be bought. And the climate wasn't likely to change. There certainly wouldn't be much rumbling from the demand center of the universe north of the border. The war on drugs was packaged perfectly to sell votes and the truth was altogether discarded. These matters could hardly concern Maze's mother, Magda. She was worried for her children and most of all for her son, in whose eyes she saw the same strange light she saw in her side of the family. She had married a human with hopes her children would not be born deluxe, and her prayers were mostly answered. She endured the curse and abuse of an alcoholic husband for it, but then the one son was born with the viable genetics she so detested, and as he grew older she determined to get him away. Maze, for she knew beyond wishing and prayers, that he would fall in with the family if she didn't get him across the border. Having been born into the mayhem, she wanted no part in the easy and violent leeching of the tangy energetic, bodies left in the desert for the law or the vultures, and likely to be blamed in the cartels. She found it disgraceful the way they carried on, the way we carried on. Down there we didn't leave any life left, we sucked them dry. She would rather die than see her son become an easy killer like a lot of them. She would have but could not take all her children. She prayed to God for guidance, and God told her to take the one and go. Her husband's family numbered many and would look after the others. Humans could be so agreeable sometimes. So she gathered the stamina to leave them, embracing them one by one and kissing their wet cheeks, and left with maize and a man she paid to get them across the border. The journey was trying and dangerous, and she called on God many times.